Hey, what's up? What is happening? How are you guys doing? Julio Ricardo Varela. It is uh, Thursday, June 18th, 2020. I'm the only reason I know it's the date because I actually have the date off my computer because I have lost all track of time in this. Uh, I don't know what it is, the transformation of the world. Anyway, this is the third show tonight. And as you know, when we do the third show, we do it together, together with myself and Melina Bobadilla. How are you? What's up, Julio times two? I'm doing great, you know? I'm rocking my, my classic Virgencita shirt. Nice. We're here because I'm Santissima Niña Buena. Just kidding. I like the dialectic because I'm Niña Mala. Um, I'm really <laughs> excited for our guests. Happy <laughs> Thursday. I th- you know, you just made the clip of the highlights with that. That's going to be, Thank I think you. we have to be like, Niña Mala. <laughs> that should be the start of the clips. But, uh, but listen, we have a special, amazing guest. Let's bring him on, Andy. He is, I call him Tocayo. He is just one of the greatest souls I've ever met, Julio Salgado. My heart is pitter-pattering right now. How are you? Oh, my God. Hi, y'all. How y'all doing? Hi. Here. Um, today, what an interesting day today was, right? It was. <laughs> let's, let's just dive right in. Wait, before we talk yeah. about such an interesting day, Julio Salgado, um, tell, can you just, it, it, I always like to introduce, I always like to have my guests, like, say who they are instead of being like because I, I you know what i mean so who are like how would you define yourself now what you know what is your bio quien eres tu quien eres tu julio salgado sí. claro claro sí 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 pues mira este sí, sí. no um <laughs> who am i so i am uh i'm an artist uh you know uh, first and foremost uh i it's taken me many years to really uh you know like say that and be like, I am an artist, um, it, but I yeah. am an artist um, and I, who happens to be undocumented um, and who happens to be very queer. <laughs> and those things have uh, informed the work that I've done in the past couple of years. Um, and and I'm a Virgo. So those are three important things you should know about yeah. me. I'm doc- <laughs> I, you're a Virgo. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. So listen, um, Yes, you said what an interesting day. And I want to talk about it for you because I did notice on one of your posts, I don't know if it was on Instagram, or, but I saw you uh, after the DACA decision, uh, the Supreme Court, which I think a lot of people, it was still wasn't like a done, like no one expected, you know, I don't think anyone said like, I I actually think people thought it was going to be rescinded more than it was going to not. But you said, let's, you know, take a moment to at least acknowledge what happened today. So I'm going to give you this moment, Julio Salgado, about what what did it mean to you? Like, what happened when you heard it? And and how has the mood been throughout the day? Uh, thank you, Ricardo Varela. Uh, 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 Julio Ricardo Varela. <laughs> I'm going to be, I'm going to, I don't know what we do. Tocayo, Julito, Salgadito. Julito, JRD. Julito, my sister calls me Julius. Oh, oh, oh no. my sister. Okay, we have to have a... Oh, don't I? I it's, feel you. Make, she, it's like it's like uh, to make fun of me, yeah. uh, Julius. But uh, <laughs> it's it, there's some backstory to that, but I won't get into it. Um, yeah. So um, today, yeah, I, I think you're right in terms of like we were all sort of like. I mean, I was. I know my circle of friends. You know, our our circle of uh, uh, documented friends. We were just like, you know, it's not gonna happen. It's yeah. You know, we and and I I feel like I was ready to and and i kind of been you know whenever i've been in spaces where i talk to younger folks um i can only share my experience right i don't speak on behalf of anybody but i'm like look i lived in a world without daca and yes it was it was hard can we curse i don't don't know Uh, (laughs) fuck yeah let's go (laughs) i believe Uh, me after my day after daca and my day i can curse all (laughs) i can curse in any language right now but continue (laughs) Este, and and so so you know one of the things that I always you know would tell you know younger folks it was just like hey look it was it was hard it was tough but I think if if anything you know I've learned 
from, you know, being around organizing spaces, being around badass activists and organizers is that we are not alone, right? Like the, the, this idea of coming out of the shadows uh, really came out of you know, coming out of the closet and like the more and the more, the be- the more, the better. And, and so I, I, I'm like, what are they going to do? Like, you know, the poor, the 700,000, you know, people that have DACA, are they really going to get rid of us? Um, so part of me was like, let's, let's let's see what happens so you know today when i woke up you know uh you know seven in the morning and you know saw the you know seven in the morning um pacific time yeah so you um, were get you were waking up to the decision because it was at 10 o'clock on eastern time yeah, yeah. And, you know the first the first uh post that i saw was from yosimar you know who was like he had the emoji thing like and i was like oh my god what happened so i i look and it, and it said you know and and I was like, wow, okay, so we got some more years and, you know, and, and you know, really get understanding what that means, right? Because, um, and I'm no legal expert, so don't ask me the legal question. No, we won't. But- <laughs> you're, you're just, a, you are, I would say that, uh, Melina, I would call Julio Salgado sort of a spirit being of the the undocumented community, an artist, not a legal expert. El movimiento. That's a nice way of saying it. A torchbearer. Chismoso. Uh, and chismoso, yeah. yes. You should, you should look at our DMs. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> you know? what I, but what I heard is that, you know, like for now we're good and, and there's still like, you know, DACA can still be, um, you know, um, you know, be taken away again. Yeah. And stuff. But definitely for sure. One of the things that I posted is that, yeah, let's, 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 let's enjoy this moment. Let's enjoy this piece of paper. Cause at the end of the day, it was this piece of paper right. that we got. And that the reality is that, um, you know, it has made it easier for a lot of us. It has, you know, it, there's no denying that, um, you know, but making sure that while we celebrate, it's like, let's not forget that, you know, and this and this, it brings me back to when DACA actually got signed, where we wanted to celebrate, but it was like sort of bitter, bittersweet because, you um, you know, our parents didn't qualify. Uh, there was a lot of people who fought really hard for it, and they didn't qualify. Uh, you know, for the Dream Act, which at the, at that time, and you know, I'm talking about 2012 when DACA was signed. Right. Um, there was a lot of people who had been, you know, fighting really hard for the Dream Act, and they aged out because you know it, there was a, an age limit that you could that you could apply. And so I barely made the the cut. You know, I was like 30 years old, um, and I believe the cut is 31. I again, no legal expert, uh, but you know, and so it was it was it's bittersweet because it's like, you know, with everything that is going on right now and that has been going on uh, for the for the many years. And I'm talking about, you know, the you know, the call from the Black Lives Matter movement, um, you know, the call, the, the 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 understanding of what that means as a movement. Right. Like a lot of the times, um, you know, we forget that um, the anti anti blackness that is real in, in our in, you know, I. I I've seen DACA groups that, oh, my God, the language that people use, um, you know, with with, you know, talking about people, you know, out there and, and you know, yeah. protest. It's just like it, 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 it. Do you know that in order to get DACA stuff done, you people had to, like, you know, do sit ins, you know, bug people, protest, you know. And, right. and so people all forget just, that. That's yeah. the thing, Melina, that um, they all forget that, you know, one of the things that people forget about this is. They thought like President Obama was like, oh, no, I'm going to give it to you guys. It's all good. People forget it was years after the Dream Act. It was that. And this is where I got to know Julio Salgado because uh, you were a younger. You were almost like doing political cartoons at the time. And your your work has gone such a different level, Julio. I'm so proud of you. And we're going to talk about it in a second with Malina. But but I want to make this point is you it was direct actions that got DACA. And people yeah. forget that. And I remember right. getting doxxed and like Obama people like would be like, what are you doing? Like these these, you know, it was like, you know, it's like Scooby Doo. Remember at the end of Scooby Doo where it's like, you <laughs> rascal kids, you like kids, <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, it's like, but I'm just like totally aging myself. But it's like you crazy kids like, but if it wasn't for the direct action, right. DACA right. would have never happened. So Let- yeah, today today I was part and and you know I would I was uh, part of this panel with mi gente uh, and you should go and see the panel uh, you know I had Lisbeth Mateo who's a badass 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 yep. uh, yep. a lawyer uh, who you know was one of the part of the first people that got you know nice. 
that did a civil disobedience back in 2010. Uh, um, and Angie, Angie from uh, from New York, uh, from Ask Angie. Um, wow. Uh, Tanya, yeah, uh, uh, there was it was it, it was it was you know the conversation was that let's remember that it took organizing uh, right. to make that happen. Literally up until before you know you know there was you know. And, and they, you know, uh, um, there's there's a there's a there's an interesting uh, history of, of how that happened. And, and if you go to uh, Mi Gente uh, and see the whole conversation, uh, Nady Dominguez uh, from uh, yes, from LA. Nady. Yeah, Nady, I love her, but she kind of you know, she kind of broke it down in terms of like, look, there were people who had uh, meetings with the White House, and right. we were pushing and saying that look, the president can do this. There was like, you know, law professors that you know signed on, and while that was happening. Um, on the, uh, you know, there was, uh, you know, activists who were seen as radical people who were taking over Obama's office and, right. you know, doing I reported on all and, that. It was crazy. And, and it was like, exactly, you know, you have to rattle shit up. And, and you right. know, and and again, you know, and, and, and it's very similar to when a lot of gay folks, you know, in my, my, my lovely gays who were, you know, not coming out and, you know, supporting yeah. Black Lives Matter. Do you know how Pride got started? It started uh, at the fucking hello. right. It's like yeah. it's it's all these things that we forget and and you know we right. want to mask like following the rules and it's like no that's mask and anti-blackness and and criminalizing right. people you know who have really uh, you know been there and so I I think that it's it's a very important you know thing to 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 acknowledge and to learn and and you know and it's important that that we have those conversations and, and it starts with families I I always feel that you know having conversations with our families it's one of the most important things to do because. Um, you know, it, it, like, you know, Univision and Telemundo, the way that a lot of the times they, uh, they report in the news, yeah. it's very sad. And so, um, yeah, so it, it, it's, 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 you know, having said that, I don't know if I've made sense, but um, no, I'm, I'm like, I don't know about you, Melina, but I'm like, if I had like, a, like popcorn, I'd just be like, yep, keep talking. Yeah. You're like the best. Fri- I mean, I knew this from well, we you like nine years ago. ago. You're like the best oh. freaking talker ever. I mean, this is <laughs> oh, yeah. like, it's. Uh, uh, oh, by the way, before I turn it over to Melina, because we do want to talk, I need to acknowledge uh, my mom. Hey, Barbara. Hi, mom. Hi, mommy. Uh-huh. My mom's watching. Um, Melina, why don't we? Uh, you have several questions, and Thank you've you. been so good. And, and yeah, and, I've been so good. Niña buena, good or like? I, no, but I mean, really you're ready. I know. I can just sense you're like, I got questions. I'm ready to go. Let's go. Bro. Let's go, Varela. Well, I'm in. What's Go, weird Marina. is that now I'm like, you know, I'm working on, on an iPad uh, with the cameras great. And then I have the faces over here on my Facebook. So I'm like, I have this whole media studio in my room. Wow. You're like um, no, <laughs> so I'm looking at everything. But Julio I'm, uh, Salgado, um, I'm so happy that you're here. And I'm excited because something that I really respect about you and I enjoy and I think is so like infectious and inspiring is your work as an artist. And and I think that when we talk about any sort of radical change, revolution, the movement, uh, dismantling, deconstructing, I think that it's absolutely imperative that we highlight the contributions of artists and how important it is, not just in terms of like beautification which is its own power in terms of like mental and and spiritual wellness right to really um make them make the movement irresistible right i think it was tony k bambara that said uh the goal of the revolutionary artist is to make the revolution irresistible damn, you're like dropping you know? quotes and everything like julio salgado and i are like Damn, she's <laughs> dropping quotes. It's like boom, Melina. I'm not gonna lie. I have a, it was my first sweatshirt that I bought when I was an undergrad in Berkeley. I was like, okay because Must I was like, I was like, clothing. Wow, yeah, <laughs> nice. <laughs> you know, I was like, that's you know, when you're when you're a young radical, you're like, I have to show the world what I think. The world needs to know my politics. Now we have social media, so I don't wear as many like wordy T-shirts. But anyway, I digress. But but that's what I love about. And it's not it's not just visual art. Um, I think you're you're ooh, you're a culture maker. Mm. Um, if I might borrow this very problematic word, but like repurpose it, you're an influencer and you influence with. And I think everyone who doesn't follow you needs to follow you right now. Oh, because it's beautiful work. You also dabble in like comedic character work. Oh, yeah, which I'm, like I love as an actor, like it gets me going. Mm. Um but I think, you know, going back to something that you said at the beginning, 
really, really sat with me. This idea of coming out, right? Like coming out as a documented mm -hmm. and equally as important for you with your layered identity coming out as, as queer, as gay, as part of the larger LGBTQI community. Like, and I think it's important that to, to highlight that the struggles, though they're, they have differences and we walk the world very differently, whether we're trans yeah. or cis or, yeah. or black, non-black, Latinx, et cetera, our, our quest for liberation um, is really targeting the same oppressor, the same system, right? And so, but but also, the real work always exists outside the system. It always starts on the ground, and and that is is where art can, is so potent and so revolutionary. So I want to ask um, our magical uh, director Andrew, the man behind right. the curtain, the Wizard of Oz, if you could just uh, throw up one of the yeah, and let's hear. Like, one of one of Julio's art pieces for folks that aren't familiar with your aesthetic, um, it's so full of color, it's so vibrant. It kind of I I I don't know how do you describe your yeah, artwork? Yeah, talk about. It. I Let just want to ask ask you about your trajectory as an artist and how you connected that to your politics. Right. Well, I mean, I oh, Melina, that that was that was beautiful. I don't know. I, if, I was like, yeah. <laughs> nice. listen. I'm, I'm there. I'm very flattered. Yeah. I'm very flattered because I'm an intellectual like, chola. <laughs> I mentioned at the beginning that I'm, I'm, you know, it took me many years to, um, to really, um, you know, own that part, you know, and call myself yeah. an artist, right? Because yeah. I initially, I mean, I've been drawing all of my life since I was a little kid. Um, and you know, when we moved to the U.S., um, that I not, you know, I moved here when I was like 12 years old, or I was 11 or 12. I was about to be a teenager, and not speaking mm -hmm. English you know, was a big thing, but I was able to communicate through art. Like, that's how I made friends. That's how people like me, you know, like, yeah, I would like, be the... Oh, that's sick. They saw it like, on your binder. Oh. Yeah, like, you could draw a fool and be friends. So it was very that. Yeah. And, uh, and so, you know, I I, I, I was also very lucky. Uh, you know, I grew up in Long Beach, California, and I went to a, to a school, to a, a, a school that, you know, really pushed for the arts. And I was always involved, involved in, you know, the art club. Um, you know, very, you know, doing all that stuff. And so my teachers always push me for, you know, for the arts. And, you know, and, and my, when I, and I remember seeing the work of Andy Warhol and I was like, I'm going to be the Mexican Andy Warhol. That was a plan. Like that. Was, yes. That, that's that was, who you are. I'm yeah. sorry. Like, I was going to say, I literally like describing your aesthetic as, as like a uh, pop wow. art, like Latinx uh, or, or, or like it's, just like queer Finally Pop hit art me. Finally hit like me. totally on it. Yeah. Okay. When I, I said this before, I'm like, I, I don't think people have a grief, but thank you for saying that. I, you know, I mean, and we can have a conversation about like the problematics of Andy Warhol. Right. And, like, oh, that's and that's such a privilege yeah, no, no, but I mean, art style. Itself, right. The right. Yeah. Like who but, but, gets yeah. to say what it is. Right. And so I, I think, I, you know, I, you know, my, my, I, what I actually wanted to do was after high school, I wanted to move to New York and like become an artist in New York because I felt that mm -hmm. New York was the place to go and become an artist. Um, you know, because right. of my staff, I wasn't, you know, I, my parents never saved up for college and, and I ended up uh, studying art in, 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 in at Long Beach, at Long Beach City College. But when I started, when I initially, my major was art, I, I was, I didn't feel like I belong in the art world, you know, like I felt like, you know, the, the work that I was studying was, it was, I, I understood that, that we needed to study this, like why dudes uh, and the influence that I had in art, but I was like, I'm like, I don't see myself in the, in the art. And sure I had, you know, uh, uh, you know, a cliche Latinx artist is going to name Pira Kahlo as one of the first people that, right. that we saw inspired us. But I was like, this is not for me. And that's just that. But like, if you're trying to be an art student, um, it's hella expensive. So yep. it was actually, uh, you know, it was journalism that really shaped me uh, because I ended up, you know, switching my majors to journalism. And I ended up, um, you know, joining the school newspaper and becoming, um, you know, very active in, in you know, and you know, doing editorial cartoons. And, mm -hmm. and I really, that was, that was my training. That was my training. Yeah. I was drawing every day. Um, I transferred to Costa Long Beach. I was on a daily newspaper and, you know, like th really like there's no, there's no, there's no other way to uh, work on your craft than actually working on it. Like there's no, right. totally simple. Just have to do it. 
It's you always like, do it, right? It's, it it's like there's no other way to work on your craft than just work on your craft. I tell people, it's like, it, right? how do you do it, right? Melina, you as an actor, it's like, how do you become a better actor? Oh, you keep I, doing the craft. I relate to this so much because yeah. as an actor, I didn't Melina. think that there was a, I didn't think there was a place for me. Right. Like, there's no one that looked like me. When I was doing theater in high school, um, and that was my my first experience as an actor, like, I remember my tias would be like, oh, mija, why don't you do novelas? And I was like, because look at them. Everyone who was on Mexican novelas isn't even fucking Mexican. They're like from Poland or from, I don't know, XYZ European country. La Polaca, coming on Univision, La Polaca. It's rooted uh, in white supremacy. Si, yeah. no me, si no me arreglo la nariz y me la hago así como Michael Jackson, it's like, where where's my place? Like. I guess I could go try to do novelas, but I guarantee you me van a tener in, in, like on the fucking corner as the maid with my trenzas and one line. Like it's not, and, and, and at this point, I'm not even about like, oh, I'll never play a maid because I think that's kind of classist and I think that's something to unpack. Yeah. But like, how do we, how do we portray those stories? How do we tell the narratives of our community, but in a complex way that, that gives dignity yeah. and that humanizes folks like and that's what that's i don't what care if you're a maid I, i'm not about like the, the model immigrant or the model like yeah you know black indigenous poc like i don't have to play the doctor but like you know it goes both ways with 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 visual arts and with um with acting how do we use this vehicle to humanize and to to really like complexify the narrative of of the communities that that we walk with you know and that's why i, I I love your work. And I, and so you mentioned this transition from like, so you were doing art and then you kind of got into journalism. And then I think, you know, this, th there's this old idea where you have to kind of choose a box, like what's your career? What are you going to, what's your plan? But like this is 2020, like millennials, we're multi-hyphenate, right? Like we wear many hats. And so speaking about, but I just have to, um, so thank you, Andrew, because uh, our magical director, and I call him magical because I don't know shit about technology. I may as well be like a 92-year-old abuela with my uh, technology uh, knowledge. But there was there was one piece that, that popped up on the screen. Um, Homeland Security, come in, girl. Like, and, and it's two people that are like holding up the border. Yes. And it's it's fucking powerful because I I I know there's folks in our community, you know, in the in the wider like Mexican Latinx community that are like very Catholic, very religious. So they might be all like immigration this, immigration that, but like, oh, um, I'm I'm feeling some type of way and I'm feeling uncomfortable when I see an image like this. And it's like, <laughs> no, this is a challenge so what do you got? to you, yeah. the viewer, yeah. and, and your fucking patriarchy. And that's honestly, that's why I wore the, the Virgen, because I like dialectics and I like the, the contrast. So Julio Salgado. So, no, it's it's very real. It's know? very real because like I, I know that. Uh, oh, can you all hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah I can hear you. Yeah, we got uh, you back. Oh, uh, Melina, you're, you know, like I for sure one of one of the things of, uh, you know, for me using humor in the work that I do, it's yeah. it's super important because, um, you know, the narrative is very like pobrecitos, you know, they're they're victims and that is real. You know, we are victims of a fucked up system. Um, but I'm like, we're more than that. Right. Like we're right. funny. We we deal. I mean, if anything, like, you know, the, the people that I know, uh, you know, around me and my own family, they're, you know, using humor is the way that we deal with a lot of this stuff. Right. And so um, I'm like, you know, would it be amazing if, uh, you know, in my imagination, like you had a drag queen and, um, you know, a, a bear welcome people oh, into yes. the, you know, at the border. Yes. And, like, at the border. Right. And so. And it does, it touches on Mary and, you know, like my intention with that image, you know, aside from making fun of home, Homeland Security, Homeland Security. Yeah, that's the image. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I I really, yeah, really, you know, uh, also, you know, talking about within ourselves, because the movement, uh, I'm talking about the immigration uh, uh, movement was very heavily Catholic and religious. Uh, they were very down for immigration and and, you know, they you were all kind of like, you know, don't talk about the gay stuff because then you're you're not concentrating uh, on the issue. Similarly, in the in the queer spaces that I was part of, you know, all they wanted to talk about was, um, you know, gay marriage and mm -hmm. you know, joining the military. Right. And 
like, what about, you know, queer and trans people who are in detention center? And so it was really, you know, uh, bringing light into some of the issues right. uh, that were, you know, we were we were part of as, you know, three-dimensional characters, right? And so, again, you know, similar to what you're saying, Melina, about, you know, because, right, I, you know, I'm obsessed with pop culture, watching TV, that's how I, you know, grew up, Same. you know, Same. I think about, I and this is always for me the example of, like, the show Friends. Why were people obsessed with a show like Friends? Listen, that's how I learned English. I, you know, I, I take it for what it was. Uh, but I was like, that's a, that's where you learn pivot. That's where you learn uh, pivot, right? Pivot. Pivot. Uh, but but really, like you know, uh, I think that the the you know the show is basically about six people hanging out, uh, and you know, and and we won't talk get into like living single, you know, having you know like a rip up. But anyways, uh, right. But totally. It's, you know. Yeah, exactly. But um, but really what, you know, what what Hollywood has done and what m mainstream media and, you know, movies in Hollywood is allowing white people to be complex. And when right. you are part of this, you know, uh, when you're an immigrant or when you're queer, you're like you're you're always pushed to give the same story and or or, or people are expecting to get something from you. And so I actually encounter other issues with some of the art that I was creating because I remember making, a, you know, a cap and gown. And I'm sorry, I don't have the image here with me, but uh, it was like uh, the cap and gown became very mm -hmm. symbolic uh, of the yeah. dreamer. Uh, I don't right. always because I'm almost 40 and like the dreamer, I always see it as, you know, a, 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 like you're younger like, you're like, you're like this, you're like, <laughs> I'm 40, I'm, I'm, a, you. I'm one of those dreamers. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, you I remember mean, this kid when you were a dreamer? Sorry, it was, it wrote itself <laughs> there, Julio. Uh, Your improv so, is coming like, out, Julio. <laughs> I, yeah, I made an image. I made an image with a cap and gown, and like it was like giving the middle finger because they wanted to pass a version of the Dream Act with only the military aspect of it, right? right. And so I was like, "Fuck that!" And no. people were like, "Oh my God, you can't, you know, you can't make art where you're like cursing or you're giving the middle finger." I'm like, mm. "But why? But why not?" Like, you why know, not? And, and exactly. I'm like, again, you know, like we are expected to constantly show. Uh, how perfect we are, and listen, with DACA, you're you you kind of have to be perfect all the time. Yeah, no, you, know, you, you can't you, mess up. You have to like enter all your information. Exactly. They check. Yeah. Yeah, and and like and again, right? And like those are the things that I'm like, yes, that's great with DACA, but I'm like, how are we gonna shift then uh, moving forward those things that we are asked to. Um, you know, to to yeah, I'm like, you don't ask other people to like live this perfect lives. You, right. You know you. You, you are and so I think with with DACA and what I hope now that we're we're and, and I'm so happy that the the you know the the conversation is really pivoting to what you know black uh, uh, Americans have been talking about for many years is that to speak on the issues that were that that you right. know and, and confront that anti-blackness right because you right. know um, the 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 criminalization uh, of folks the way that we only think of immigration as a non-black uh, you know a Latinx uh, issue it's very, very problematic in itself. And so like, right. I hope through our, through, you know, these stories that we're yeah. sharing, all this stuff like that changes and, you know, a little bit in, in terms of, of the narratives. Right. So you, before, oh my God, I, I, I just want to say- Julio, do uh, we have to? We do, we do. This is what we do. Well, I just want to say, uh, yeah. you definitely won the, the Latino Rebels Radio Live Best Talker Award. Oh my um, God. So there you go, <laughs> of, of the Ow. summer. And Can and you an also app? have a new book coming out. You want to say the book that what's coming out in the fall, right? You, yeah, well, it's, not my, it's not my book, but I did the cover. I mean, you did the cover. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah you're right. Queer and trans migration. Um, and it was actually um, it was it was um, it was it was it's by uh, Karma Art Chavez um, and uh, Ethne Luv Hate. I'm just gonna hate me that I can pronounce her last name. But um, you know, they asked me they asked me to come in and and. Um, and you know, do the illustration, the cover for this book. And um, I was actually initially supposed to like help edit some of the some of the, yeah. the, the things. Like I'm not, I, I didn't have the time, but I'm like, I am down to make an uh, illustration for this. And there's amazing people that share stories in there. Um, I believe Bambi Salcedo uh, share, you know, uh, yeah. her story in there. So when that book comes out, and I believe the book comes out in, uh, I think in October. It comes out in October. You know uh, where to find us. All right. So yeah. listen. Yeah. And I'm sorry. I just have to. I would be remiss if I didn't shout out Cumbiaton. Cumbiaton. Because that is an extension of the Undocu Joy. 
yeah. that that like I hear you talk so much about. I hear Yossi talk so much about. This is by the way, this is a second day in a row that we shout out Yossi Mad. I don't even know. It's muy especial. I don't know if she, like he's watching, but you need to. So <laughs> just really quickly, if you could just kind of yes. walk Cumbia us out. Yeah, really quick, and Cumbia Tone. I want to give. Yeah, uh, yes, it was cool. it was a party that got started uh, when uh, when when capricious. I'm gonna call Trump capricious from now on, which is what he was. <laughs> the final decision. I saw uh, you but do that it, on a post. You know, when, when he was uh, when he was elected, uh, you know, DJ Sissel uh, and my friend Norsolo Hakenia started this party uh, out of Boyle Heights, and you know, it was a place to to come together and be like, you know what, they're gonna see, they wanna see us cry, but we're gonna party. We're gonna, uh, you, go. you know, see ourselves. And shout out to DJ Funky and Paolo, uh, who are also part of the team. And we need hopefully, to get them, yeah, we, we need yes! to get them. So Over, we need we to get them on our, big... our DJ. Should we do? Set. I'm sorry, but I think an idea was just born. I think we need to do a Latino Rebels live slash Cumbiaton live. Yeah, no, we got, we got, we we do them on Saturday. We got to do these Saturday night things, so we're gonna do that. But listen, yeah. Julio Salgado, um, I love you a lot. I so I I've seen you go from like you know scrappy political cartoonist to like accomplished artist. Uh, I I actually looked at some of the old emails. Like, you oh really were like you were like. I really want to do this. Like, it's so sweet. So I'm really just happy that you're here. Oh. Yeah. And like I said, we turn 10 years next year and I'm definitely through Futuro Media. I want to reach out to you because I think you would be the perfect artist for the 10 year anniversary of Latino Rebels because you saw it from the beginning and here we are as a bookend. Thank you so much for being on. We love you a lot. Stay in touch. Enjoy DACA Day, right? I don't know. Enjoy today. Take a moment. Take a moment today. So thank you again, Julio. Thank you. Thank you, Julio. And so, oh, there you go. So I think Julio and Melina, you know, there's another new Julio in Melina's life, which is always good. Uh, but listen, guys, <laughs> we will be back next Tuesday. Uh, thank you, Melina. Great week. Thank you so much. You were great. You were fantastic. And uh, we will be back next week on Tuesday. If you missed any of this, we're going to do some highlights. Our director, Andy Vasquez, will do a highlights clip. What we do, we're also putting these up on Instagram and on the YouTube. So watch those. And um, <laughs> on the, there you go. And then the I, YouTube. The YouTube. I'm trying to be cool. Like, Shout I'm trying out to be to cool. Bernie, the one that got away. Yeah, on the YouTube. Episode. But anyway, guys, we love you a lot. We will be back on Tuesday. Catch us on the highlights. We also are going to do a. Um, uh, a live DJ set that is going to be a liberation <gasps> party on Saturday on Mixcloud. So stay oh, tuned for that. Me. You see, you see what I'm saying, Melina? But um, right. anyway, guys, thank you guys for all the comments. We will see you guys on Tuesday. I have a big <laughs> surprise. So take care, guys. Love you a lot. Can we get an owl? <laughs> <Ow. laughs> oh, bye, guys. <laughs> Salgado. <laughs> <laughs>